The formula weight is the mass of all of the atoms in a chemical formula. The unit is AMUs. If the substance is a molecular substance, in other words, it has only nonmetals, then the term molecular weight is also used. So when you're finding the formula weight or molecular weight, you are assuming that you have only one molecule of the substance, a single molecule. And we measure the mass of single atoms or single molecules typically with AMUs. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. The typical unit is grams. And hopefully from your earlier studies in chemistry, you recall that one mole of any substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance. That would be a number that you need to memorize. Let's take a little aside for a moment and ask how big is a mole? Well, a mole is about the size of a chipmunk, weighing about 5 ounces or 140 grams and having a length of about 7 inches, about 18 centimeters. I meant how big is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Oh, well, that's big. How big? If you had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd marbles, they would cover the entire earth, including the oceans, to a depth of two miles. Go outside sometime and look up and imagine that you are standing at the bottom of two miles deep of marbles and those marbles cover the entire earth. That is about one mole of marbles. Here's another example. That many one dollar bills stacked face to face, so there's a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, and so on. If you had that many one dollar bills stacked face to face, that stack would stretch from the Sun to Pluto and back. Once it gets to Pluto, we have to turn it back seven and a half million times. If that stack kept going in a straight line, it would take light nearly 10,000 years to go from one end of the stack to the other. This number is absolutely huge. It's so big that it's hard to get our minds around it. Here's one more example. As I'm making this recording, the year is 2016. The current world population is about seven and a half billion people. The average human has about 37 trillion cells. Bone cells, muscle cells, skin cells, etc. So the total number of human cells on Earth in 2016 is 7.5 billion people multiplied by 37 trillion cells for every person. That's 2.8 times 10 to the 23rd cells. That's less than half a mole. That number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is absolutely ginormous. And it's interesting that that many atoms of a given element can easily fit into a baby food jar when not even half a mole of human cells currently exist on our planet. Truly remarkable. Okay, let's try a problem. Find the molar mass and formula weight of ammonium phosphate. Now to do this, we need to know the formula of ammonium phosphate. So we recall that the ammonium ion has that formula, the phosphate ion has that formula. The ratio is three ammonium ions for every phosphate ion. We're now going to count up the number of atoms in this formula. And we can use the distributive property to take this three times everything that's inside. So there are three nitrogens, three times four hydrogens, which is 12, and then one phosphorus, and of course the four oxygens. In one mole of ammonium phosphate, there are three moles of nitrogen. In one mole of ammonium phosphate, there are 12 moles of hydrogen one mole of phosphorus and four moles of oxygen. The mass of three moles of nitrogen is going to be three times the molar mass of nitrogen, which we know from the periodic table to be 14. You can look up these molar masses if you want. Hydrogen, as I say, is a penny a piece, one gram for every mole. Similarly, phosphorus and oxygen. We multiply those out, we add them up, 
and that's the molar mass of ammonium phosphate. One mole of ammonium phosphate has three moles of nitrogen, 12 moles of hydrogen, one mole of phosphorus, four moles of oxygen. The mass of all those moles added up is 149.0 grams. When we find the formula weight, the formula weight has the same numerical value as the molar mass, except instead of dealing with a mole of ammonium phosphate, we're simply dealing with a single formula unit. You might think of it as a single molecule. Three nitrogen atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, one phosphorus atom, four oxygen atoms. And if we had atoms, wouldn't these units here not be grams, but rather would be a muse? Let's finish up this lesson by talking about percentage composition. Percentage composition is the mass percentage of each element in a compound. In other words, it's the mass of any particular element divided by the mass of the compound and multiplied by 100 to put it in percentage form. Let's try this example. Find the percentage of oxygen by mass in calcium nitrate. Well, I don't really know where to go from here, so let's start by writing the formula for calcium nitrate. From the periodic table, we can see that calcium would get a 2 plus charge when it becomes an ion. We've memorized the nitrate ion to be NO3, 1 minus, which means the formula for calcium nitrate looks like this. Then the percentage of oxygen is independent of the amount of calcium nitrate we have. We're not told how much we have. If we have a small amount or a large amount, the percentage of oxygen is going to be the same for either of those. So we could assume that we have one mole of calcium nitrate, or we could assume that we have one formula unit, one molecule. The correct term is formula unit for ionic substances, but if you're not familiar with that, you can think of it for now as a molecule. It's just a little white lie. In any case, the percentage of oxygen, whether we say we have one mole of calcium nitrate or one formula unit of calcium nitrate, the calculation would be the same. Six oxygen atoms, two times three, multiplied by the mass of oxygen, which is 16. That's the mass of oxygen. And in the denominator, there's one calcium, 40.1 from the periodic table, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. And whether the units on these numbers in parentheses, whether the unit is grams or whether the unit is AMUs, makes no difference. In any case, the percentage of oxygen by mass is about 58.5%.